Hello again. For those who uh, have read either of my previous articles or videos, seen the videos, welcome again. And for anyone who's new, it's good to see you. Essentially, I'm picking up on things that may sound obscure, but actually may affect billions of people. Anyone who's seen the videos before would know my reading habits. I tend to do my reading at crazy hours in the morning when my wife really rebukes me. Five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, I'm sat in the kitchen. I don't know why the height of the table is just right for reading for me. I'm near the coffee machine, and off I go. Reading is usually pretty dull stuff. Medical stuff, you know. I'm sure you wouldn't like to be doing it. And once in a while, something really breaks through and absolutely grabs your attention. I prefer to say grabs your attention. I could say grabs you in other ways, but I prefer to say attention. I don't want to be vulgar. So there I am sitting there with my first cup of strong black coffee in the morning. And I like black coffee. Don't tell me that it's going to make me ill. I don't believe it. I do not believe that Brazilians have more heart, death, or whatever than other people. I like my black coffee, and I like it without the caffeine removed. Well, there we are. We all have our weaknesses, don't we? Um, so, to sit there at that sort of time in the morning, and read an article that starts like this. And mind you, this one's different. It wasn't in the New England Journal of Medicine. It was in our very own The Lancet, which is actually the world's, probably still the world's, second most respected magazine after the New England Journal. So it's big stuff. This is the real thing. And this is really how it started. Two billion people, two billion, worldwide, have insufficient iodine intake. Well, so what? <laughs> I mean, really, I don't know. Two billion, though. Wow. I'm a collector of figures and numbers. Two billion is twice as many as one billion. Two billion is practically one in three of the entire world's population. I mean, that's just a staggering thing. I had to read on. I really did. I might be one of them for a start. So might you. Who knows? Generally speaking, when we read these figures in our cosy little homes in Great Britain and whatever, we mostly tend to think, well, this is happening in some faraway continent and that this really doesn't have much to do with me. It's to do with the teeming masses in Calcutta or wherever. But actually, this was the next shock. It happens right here in the UK. It happens particularly in Europe. In actual fact, in terms of iodine deficiency, Europe is the worst offender and the Eastern Mediterranean comes second. America has done well on this particular one. Okay, so yes, it's very common, and yes, we have it too. Well, or do we? The World Health Organization has brought out a huge survey of iodine deficiency disease in the world, and sadly, many European countries, including ourselves, don't actually collect the statistics they require. So we actually don't really know. I read just the other day um, a big article in Britain which said this is the first article to look at the, the prevalence of this disorder um, in the UK. So up to now, apart from a few isolated uh, reviews here and there, we certainly have no idea what the overall state of the British population is from the point of view of iodine consumption. We do know that only 5% of the population have, uh, only 5% of the water that we use is, has added iodine to it. Whereas in most countries in the world now, they routinely add iodine to the water, which completely corrects this thing. In America, in the 1920s, they brought in the iodination of water, that is, adding iodine to it, and 
up till then, they had suffered from more or less epidemic levels of cretinism. Cretinism is a congenital disorder in brain development and brain cognition caused by iodine deficiency. If you have an iodine deficient mother, you'll probably have an iodine deficient baby. If the fetus is iodine deficient, the brain simply doesn't develop as it should. And of course that maldevelopment will be there for life. There's no correcting that at a later stage. Um, so it's very easy to do this. The cost of iodinating water is very little indeed. Why don't we do it too? Well, I suppose there may be many arguments for and against. The public generally hate the tampering with food in any way at all. Look at GM crops and look at the row we had over whether we should uh, add fluoride, which prevents dental decay, to our water supplies. Very ferocious arguments on both sides. But really and truly, health and safety is one thing, but it shouldn't be the death of us. And in the case of iodine deficiency, that could well be so, because iodine deficiency really matters, not just because it affects such a large number of people, but because of what it does to people. What is iodine? It's an essential ingredient of the hormones you produce in the thyroid gland. Your thyroid gland is in your neck. In most cases, you can't even feel it. If you can feel it, it's probably a little bit enlarged, which isn't rare. If it is enlarged, we call that a goiter. Some goiters can be absolutely massive, huge. People who come from some other countries or people even in the UK have often known or seen somebody who had a really massive swelling in their neck due to thyroid swelling from thyroid deficiency. The resultant deficiency in the thyroid hormone means that your brain simply doesn't work as well as it should. If you're low in thyroid, you really are going to be tired a lot of the time, perhaps more inclined to gain weight than other people are. You're likely to feel the cold worse than other people do. You may be more prone to depression. Your cholesterol level is often higher if you are iodine deficient, if you are, that is to say, thyroid deficient, because the two really are almost one and the same thing. Iodine deficiency leads to thyroid deficiency, that's what leads to the majority of effects of iodine deficiency. Possibly not to all. You may be more inclined to depression. Certainly your capacity to learn speedily will be reduced if you are thyroid deficient. The reason why they introduced iodination of water in Switzerland was when they reached the point when they found that actually 50% of people they were calling up for their compulsory military service, had goiters, and evidently goiter was one of the things that they excluded candidates for. So nearly everyone had a goiter, 50%, one in two. They thought as a nation this had gone too far, and they decided to iodinate their water. The incidence of goiter in Switzerland is now no more than it is anywhere else, and certainly is probably much lower. Your body can't make it itself, it's like vitamins, you have to have a supply of them, and you need enough of it. So why is it that iodine deficiency suddenly seems to be such a major problem? Iodine occurs most naturally in seawater. The seawater evaporates, of course it does, and the action of the sun on the sea converts iodide that's in the sea into the actual elemental iodine. Iodine vaporizes and just floats into the air because it's lighter than air. And then the cycle continues when, having gone up into the clouds, it rains and the iodine comes back to us. If you don't have much rain, then you're not going to get much iodine. Or equally, if you have too many floods, then it's going to wash all the iodine out of the soil that you have got. One way and another, if the soil becomes impoverished in iodine, Everything that grows in it becomes impoverished as well. The sort of things that grow in it are obviously grass, cattle that feed on the grass, all the milk products that come from cattle to say nothing of the meat. If all of the 
food products, the whole food chain becomes low in iodine, 